Hi there. So we're going to have a look at the different transform functions that P5JS has. Uh, in particular, we're going to have a look now at the transform or translate, sorry, and the rotate function. Uh, there's also the option to do the scale function and we'll have a look at that later on. So I'm going to just start by drawing a simple rectangle and then let's use translate and rotate to move it around the screen. So let's, uh, ooh, that's not what we want, we want rectangle. Um, and if you remember with a rectangle, we put its starting X and Y point in the top left corner. So I'm just gonna put it at, let's say 20 pixels across by 20 pixels down. And one, I'm gonna make it 100 pixels wide and 25 pixels wide. Hi. And let's see, here we have my rectangle. I'm also just, for the fun of it, I'm actually going to, let's make the background um, black. And let's go, no stroke on the rectangle. And let's make the fill color something fun, like uh, 255, say 123. I'm just guessing some colors here. Generally, if you put the RGB values uh, all fairly high up, I mean, if they're all up at 255, you'll have white. Uh, but if you put one of them at 255 and the other two fairly bright, you will get like some kind of nice bright color. Actually, I'm just gonna put 20. And I think I'll get some kind of orange or, or pink. And let's see. Oh, yep, there we go, it's an orange. So now I have my orange rectangle on the black background. Okay, so I'm actually gonna just jump straight in and look at the rotate function because it doesn't, um, it's not gonna work exactly how you expect it to. So let's uh, just have a look at this and I'm going to, above rectangle, type in rotate and let's rotate it by, I don't know, 15 and see what happens. Oh, and it's gone. Okay, so where'd it go? Uh, it's, um, the reason this has happened is that by default, P5JS measures uh, rotation in radians. Um, I'm not gonna go into the maths of what radians are. Um, what I want to do is I want to measure it in degrees. And so just to, um, before I go on and do that, I'm just going to chuck my iPad on again, just to make sure that we all understand what measuring something in degrees means. So if we were to say, think of a triangle and this measurement here is the degrees. So this is supposed to be 90 degrees here. So some common degrees, as you know, are yeah, like 90 degrees, like a right angle, 45 degrees, half of that, and various other degrees. As the degrees get smaller, the angle is smaller. So that's the degrees, is this, this sort of thing here. Yes, I'm not doing good maths, but I think we all understand what that is. Um, again, and if you rotate something uh, 360 degrees, you've rotated it one full circle. So let's uh, switch our angle mode to be degrees. So angle mode is sort of a setting you can do in P5JS. Just for ease of use, I'm going to put this in the setup section because I want it to sort of take place all the time. It only needs to run once. It's called angle mode. Whee. And we set this to degrees and you need to set that in capitals or it won't recognize it. Uh, the things in capital letters are variables, they're system variables. And we've seen this before when we've set the um, Set the way that squares and different things draw. Anyway. Okay, so now that my angle mode is set to degrees, what happens now if I rotate it 15 degrees? Um, it still didn't do exactly what I expected to. So let's just uh, turn off the rotation for a second. Um, and let's um, 
make it something more extreme. And actually, I'm going to just move my rectangle down a bit just to demonstrate this better. So here's my rectangle. So what I originally I would have thought is if I rotated at 15 degrees is that it would rotate from the point of origin of the rectangle, which is here um, as the top left corner. And just to remind you, um, so remember when we drew rectangles, we drew the XY value starting from here. So this is the what I consider the point of origin in, in my head at least uh, for rectangles in P5JS. So let's put this rotate back on and see what happens. Okay, so the point of origin didn't stay in the same spot. Um, again, if we think about rotating something by a point of origin, so I've got a sticker here. So if the point of origin was um, this corner, I would expect that my item would rotate like this. So the point of origin is the point that does not move in a rotation. So what's going on? Um, rotation and the other transform functions use the frame as the point of origin. So if we jump back to this, so it uses our grid system's point of origin and we can see the point of origin for the grid system and the way that we place things puts this top left corner at 0.0. .0. Um, maybe I'm just going to draw this again. So let's get the iPad up. So um, yeah, let's add a new page. Okay, so if I have uh, the point of origin at 0, 0 of my P5JS frame, and I have my rectangle down here, or did I have it at like uh, 50, 50, I think. If I rotate this, it actually rotates from this point here, and so I get this quite wide arc uh, that it's rotating around. So if I was to, I might add a line in uh, just to show you. But yes, if I was to draw this, you could see that it's it is going on an angle, but it's always in retrospect to this point of origin of zero zero. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Um, I might actually make it rotate, just like uh, animate the rotation, just to show you. So rotate is currently being set by 45 degrees. I've got it as degrees. And I'm going to, if you think about degrees, once it goes over 360 and does a full circle, the more it should keep rotating. So I'm going to add a variable here called three. Let's call it angle and I'm going to start with it at zero. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add one to angle each time the draw loop is called. So angle plus equals, actually I'm only going to add 0.5 because it might go too fast otherwise. And in the rotate func section, I'm going to put angle, my variable name angle. And so if you remember, we did variables before and we have looked at a few different variables and there's something we're going to keep using. So it's worth getting used to them. If you're not sure if they're not making sense yet, copy what I'm doing and I think it should make sense over time or shoot me an email and ask me some questions. Okay, so now what's happening? So now you can really see that the point of origin, it's going all the way around, it's going to come back soon. It's coming back, it's coming, no, not yet. I should have made it faster. There we go. Um, so you can see that it's not rotating. Like my rectangle is here and it's like my whole page is rotating rather than just the rectangle on its own. Um, and yeah, that's because all the transform functions are actually transforming the whole screen. 
So how do I get my rectangle to do what I want it to do? I'll just stop this for now. And, and that's where the uh, why you would use transform. Or translate, sorry. <laughs> so the translate function, I'm just going to turn off rotate for now and we will have a look at translate now. So back to normal, could I rectangle here? The translate function translates the position of the whole screen of your x, y. Oh, sorry, I've had my iPad on the whole time. So let's just uh, quickly go over the code that you probably couldn't see very well. And so that is that I set up this variable called angle. And that instead of rotating 45, I'm rotating the angle, which right now is zero, so it'll start at zero. And I'm setting the angle to add 0.5 each time this draw loop happens. So 60 times a second, 0.5 will be added to the angle. Um, and actually that went kind of slow before, so I'm going to change this to 1 and that's going to change the speed. So it's going all around the outside right now and it's going to come back, there it goes, and so on. And there are reasons that you would do this. Um, that there is a usefulness to the transform functions. Okay, I'll just turn angle off again. Alrighty, so, and I will just play that so nothing's happening. And I'll just turn this rotate off as well. It wasn't doing anything there because angle was set to zero and I turned off counting angle up. So the way we can make this rectangle rotate on its um, x, y sort of point of origin is we can use the translate function first. So let's look at the translate function. So the translate function takes two values. Um, it can translate something, so move it basically uh, in an x position and a y position. So if I put here translate 100 by 100 it's going to move my rectangle 100 and 100 on top of these other two positions uh, so let's put the rotate back on now have a guess about what you think it's going to go do like I don't know if you think it's going to is it going to do what I want yet and no it's, it's almost worse. It's doing like a much bigger circle. This is really not what I want. Okay. So there's more steps involved. So originally my, um, ooh, I'll just turn this off actually. Without the translate set, I had my rectangle set to be at 50 and 50. Um, doing this, so I'll just change the code a bit to get exactly the same outcome. So I'm going to position my rectangle at 0 and 0. And I'm going to use translate to position it at 50 and 50. So now we're right back where we started. And it looks the same, but there's actually a really fundamental dis difference. And that is that, um, maybe I will just get my iPad up again. Get my face in there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the difference is of, we've actually moved the whole, the whole grid frame. Um, and hopefully I don't forget to turn it off this time. So if we look here at... You know, this is my frame, it's, uh, what do you think, it's 600 by 600. Um, and my rectangle is here at 0 and 0. And what Translate has done is it's actually changed our point of view. So now we are looking at... Um, that this whole frame, this whole thing has been moved down by 50 pixels and across by 50 pixels. 
And so order does matter here. I'm just going to get rid of that again. Order does matter. And I'm just going to also draw another rectangle before I define um, this translate. Just to avoid confusion, I'll just turn off this angle, even though it's set to zero. Um, so before the translate, I'm going to draw another very small rectangle. And I'm going to draw, a, yeah, let's, let's go rectangle. I'm going to also draw this one at zero and zero. And I'm only going to make it 10 whips. I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to make it 30 pixels wide and only 10 pixels high. And you can see that this little rectangle is up here in the corner. So it's not being affected by the translate. And so just to remind you, the, the order of these things matters. Once it gets back to the top of the draw function, things, that, um, things like translate and rotate are set back um, to their standard way of being. Um, so just to... show you that again. Actually, to show you this, I'm going to need to... Yeah, so I'll, I'm just going to move this rectangle down. Um, and if I put this under here... Oui, what happened there? X. I'm just going to put it under here and I'm going to turn off no stroke so that we can see what happens. So now there is a black stroke around the rectangle. And you can see that now that this rectangle is underneath the translate, it's also being affected by that translate, by this one translate is affecting both rectangles. So yeah, that was just to sort of demonstrate the order. But now that my general point of origin has been moved down, if I rotate now, um, and I don't think this order is going to matter because it gets translated anyway. Uh, we see nothing because our angle is zero. And I'll just uncomment this animation. And it's still not working how I had planned. Okay, and that's because I just contradicted myself. So. Rectangle here, Ooh, it's working in the demo, I just tried it out. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, yeah, it's still doing this kind of big arc, which is not what I wanted it to do. And as I just told you, order does matter. So what's happening here is the whole, um, the whole page is being rotated, essentially. And then the squares, the rectangles being translated. So if I move this angle to appear after translate, happens now. Okay, so now we have our rectangle rotating around its point of origin. And again, let's just refresh the point of origin here uh, for the grid system is there. But for our rectangle, our point of origin is x by y. So how would I get this rectangle to rotate around its center? Um, Perhaps you remember from last week, um, we looked at all the different, so we looked at the, we didn't, we looked at ellipse mode, which changed the point of origin for the ellipse. And if I remember correctly, there is rectangle mode. Um, and so I want to change my rectangle mode to center. I'm not 100% sure it's rectangle mode, but let's uh, try typing it. Maybe it's rect mode. Oh yeah, rect mode. And see, I can tell that. See how it goes bold? That means my code is correct. Um, and I want the rect mode to be center. Has to be capitals. And um, let's play it now. So now I have my rectangle rotating around a central axis point. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So what would I do if I wanted two rectangles rotating independently of each other? 
Um, so we've seen with the color. So when I work with color, I can sort of choose my fill color here and I'm going to put another rectangle above it actually. So let's uh, let's give this rectangle a different fill color. Ooh, not capitals. So this time I'm going to go zero in the red. I'm going to make it some sort of 240 in the green and let's give it 100 in the blue. And I'm going to create another rectangle. Again, this one won't be affected by translate and rotate because it's up the top here. Um, and I'm going to put it at I don't know, 300 by 300 and I'll make it 50 by 100, let's say. So a tall rectangle. And there we go. So yeah, I have a second rectangle that's not being affected by this second one. So if I want to rotate this rectangle, um, perhaps I could do the same. I could, uh, above this rectangle, I'll set the translate. And I'm actually going to tr use translate to move this rectangle instead of positioning it 300. So. And then I will rotate it. And rotation is already set to angle mode degrees. So I'm going to rotate it by the same angle as before. So I can just put in here angle. So the angle plus one is going to affect it as well. And let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, so something really, this is not what I wanted. And there's somehow like this one is rotating around the outside of the other one. Um, if I just a comment out these at the moment, and you can see that actually even by default, oh, you can see what I've done. Can anyone see what I've done? I forgot to take, turn this back to zero. Let's turn this back to zero. Let's put these guys back on. And now let's have a look at what's happening. Um, and so they're both rotating. Actually, this is this is kind of cool. Um, but this the rectangle, this green rectangle, the rotation and translate I've applied to it, it's kind of adding on to these ones down here. Um, and let's see an example of that by um, instead of uh, rotating it by angle, I could rotate it by the negative angle. Um, and now you see this second, um, this orange rectangle, it's being cancelled out. So it's, it's just flat because it's being uh, rotated by a negative angle that's adding to one. And then it's being rotated again by an angle. So actually it just cancels itself out. So it's just moving around this green rectangle, which, you know, this could be something that you want to achieve. But right now, it's not. What I would like to achieve is these two rectangles working independently of each other. Okay, so let's stop that for now. So I'm going to introduce you to two more bits of code uh, called push and pop. And so what push and pop do is they essentially, um, any of these kind of overall uh, overall functions such as your transform functions. Uh, it also works with your color functions. Um, it kind of takes them out of the rest of the code and has it sit by itself. Um, and so whatever you is inside push and pop, things like translate won't affect the code below it. Um, I'll put that back on so you've got something to look at. So I'll just show you an example of this. So. Here's my translate, rotate, fill, and rectangle. Um, I'm also going to put a stroke color in here because this does affect your colors. Um, I'll put it with the fill just to. So let's go stroke. Um, we've already got a stroke width because we don't turn stroke off till here. And I will say stroke of. 
I keep trying to get pink, but it doesn't work. I'm going to go 255, 255, and 20, which I think should be some kind of yellow. Yep, so we've got this yellow stroke around the green. Um, again, we turn stroke off afterwards, and so that's why the orange one doesn't have a stroke. So yeah, you've got to remember to pay attention to the order that you're putting things in. Um, one other thing to notice when it comes to order is see how this orange rectangle, I'm just going to label this to orange rectangle. See how this orange rectangle is in front of the green rectangle. So again, that relates to the fact that the orange rectangle comes after the green rectangle in the code. Um, and so whatever's later in the code is in the front of your image. Alrighty, so we've got this happening. I want to make them work independently of each other. So I'm going to use push and pop. Uh, so push, I actually don't know the origins of why it's called this, but push sort of starts the separation of the code. So I can type in push here with the brackets after it. And then when I want this to end, so the end of my contained code, I put pop. Uh, and so now this translate and this rotate, as well as this stroke and fill, won't affect this orange rectangle code. So I don't need to put it on both of these. Um, I only need to put it on the one I don't want affecting anything else. And now I have uh, two two rectangles rotating at different um, different uh, directions. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So push and pop's useful for all sorts of things. You may find at some points that you have you want you want everything to be green. So say I had 20 rectangles, I wanted them all to be green except for one. But the one rectangle that I didn't want green was in the middle. I could just use push and pop to change that one. Uh, maybe talking in the abstract of code doesn't help. But yeah, if there's any point where you need your code to apply to just one little bit and you don't want it to flow down, push and pop are your friends. Okay. And so just one other little reminder about the animation is that um, I've got it set to 1 right now. If I was to set angle to 1.5, the higher the number I go, the more it moves each uh, frame uh, or each time draw is called. And remember that draw is called 60 times a second by default. Uh, so the higher the number, the faster it's going to move. If I say five, it's going to go even faster. If I want these to move at different speeds, I could, I don't think I can put it in pop. Let's try it. Angle plus one. Oh, what am I doing? Angle plus equals one. I actually have no idea what this is going to do. Yeah, I did not like that. It just sort of broke my code. Let's stop that. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, if I wanted to make them run at different speeds, I would use two variables for now. So that's... Uh, there we go, variable. Yeah, just angle two. I'm not being very imaginative right now. And I'm going to start it at zero, and down here I'll say angle two uh, plus equals. So it increments by this amount um, each time. Two. Oh, and it's still not working because I haven't put angle two in here. Um, also want to point out that just to note that I've used the negative sign in front of angle 2 here and so that actually makes it turn in the opposite so it puts a negative in front of that value. I could actually get rid of that and instead of plus equals 2 but now that I've got them as separate uh, variables I could say minus equals 2 
Um, so it looks exactly the same, but it's just a little bit less code, less convoluted. So I don't have to sort of double think to understand these two things. Okay, so that's using the translate functions to play around with things. Um, I'm just going to leave this for now. I will uh, stop it and... Oi, that's not what I wanted. Don't forget that you can um, have a look at my code if you want to use any of it. Okay, so let's just call that rotation. R rotate and translate. All right, so I'm going to make a new file and we're going to have a look at, uh, we're going to look at mouse X and mouse Y, but I'm going to make a second video for that. So yeah, thanks for watching.